All right, boys, welcome to a new video where we're going to compare the two between Diaga and Palkia with the recent releases of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. A lot of people have this idea that they think one is drastically bigger and better than the other. When I don't know who really started this rumor, but that is not the case at all. So if you're excited for the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, guys, let me know your thoughts down below. We're going to go between the two. We'll start off with the Diaga, the temporal time based Pokemon, right? Abilities pressure, steel dragon, first of its kind in Generation 4 first of its kind and it is a very good typing very good typing very strong typing offensively very strong typing defensively as you can see with its one two three four five six seven eight nine nine resistances one of them being a fourth right and then he has an immunity so technically we could just jot that down to ten and only having two weaknesses of being fighting and ground so which, honestly speaking, though, these two weaknesses are pretty glaring. Like, they're definitely not something you can ignore uh, with everyone their mother learning Earthquake 1. And number two, with the addition of, like, Power Up Punch, uh, it's it's not anything to really scoff at. The fighting and ground weakness is definitely there. But when he has all these resistances, he really gets away with so much. Being at base 100 HP with 120 in his defense and 100 in his bedef, the man is very, very tanky. But just because he's very tanky does not mean he can't do damage either because he has a whopping 150 in special attack and 120 in physical attack. So that guy is just great at everything. His only real flaw is his speed. He's not that fast. Now, some may think 90 base speed is fast, but yeah, maybe 15 years ago, we're in a power creep meta right now, guys. 90 speed is just very average and 90 speed is very average guys uh it's not really anything amazing or to really get hard or jack off about but it's also not bad either it's definitely above the 80 so usually if you're above 80 it's like all right okay cool we got some to work here but it's also below 100 so it's not really the best but when you have all these defenses he's mainly just a bulky attacker that actually can move as well too because he has a decent speed stat so imagine a bulky attacker with great defenses like this with insanely good resistances like this as well too that has really good stats that actually can move most mons with a stat pool of this uh, with the typing of this and also with the resistances for his typing like this defensively you don't really see a mon like this moving at 90 speed so it's actually pretty good for him um and he learns a lot of really good moves as well too uh at around this point he gets metal burst with a decent like just counteractive move just it's literally just counter right um omega's aura sphere dragon claw roar of time flash cannon uh, he, he gets so many moves that's by just by level up earth power, right? Then you have the move that he learns by team, which is way better because he learns moves like bulk up, um, even ice beam. Uh, he gets moves like thunderbolt, earthquake, brick break, flamethrower, fire blast. Like the list goes on. Draco as well, too, with a move through T wave, stone edge, like. So many good support moves, while well, so many good offensive moves as well, too. Bulldoze, uh, he gets uh, Flash Cannon as well, too. Trick Room, like, the guy learns really good moves, so he's very strong defensively, for sure. So he kind of has a defensive aspect, really just down pat. Not to mention, as well, too, offensively, he's actually not that bad either. With a 150 special attack stat, you can't ignore this. This is a very strong Mon very strong mod now some look at this and people just always think oh what's the point in palkia this mod is just so much better well palkia is also not that bad either i think palkia is really really slept on at least in the normal eye if you play competitive pokemon i don't really need to sit and explain this to you you just know palkia is strong but they're relative in strength both lore wise and strength they are literally identical lore wise for strength uh, but when it comes to competitive wise they are very identical the only real difference here is that Palkia is base 100 speed um, so they swap the HP stat with the speed stat for Palkia so he has 90 HP with 100 speed then they also swapped the Fizz def with the speed def so Palkia is more speed def bulky uh, then Diaga because seal type so fizz right physically more tankier with the armor steel plates that he has makes sense versus Palkia which is spatial time bending so it could probably like recreate all this like space barrier bullshit which makes the spidef actually a lot more tankier so it makes sense in almost every way shape and form abilities are not that different either so like I said guys they're very relative to each other right uh, Palkia is shorter so 
to each their own, but they both have pressure with telepathy and his inability. Really not that far off. I think obviously the biggest difference though is the resistances. Palkia really only has two, three resistances, but the big thing though is that two of them are times four resistances, uh, and then he also resists steel. And he only has two weaknesses in the game. So people look at this. This is the issue that I have with Palkia. People look at this chart right here. And then they look at Dialga's chart, which on paper looks disgusting. Like it is one of the best charts on paper Pokemon has ever made, right? But the problem though, is that people look at this and they don't really understand the concept of Pokemon, right? Because you are neutral to a typing does not make a Pokemon bad. Now, does more resistances make it better for the typing combination? Yes, Steel Dragon is a better typing combination than Water Dragon. But that does not mean that Water Dragon is also bad because it has almost everything the game is neutral to and it has two moves that are times four resistance being fire and water, which especially water is a very common typing. So I don't really know who started this rumor that Water Dragon is a bad typing, but you even had mods like Kingdra two generations before this that was a very powerful mod in its generation generation especially even now in generation four with rain teams because that typing is so strong like while yes yes swift swim water dragon is a very good typing as well too offensively um and defensively it's actually not that bad as well too because you are neutral to almost everything in the game and you really before this point before fairies if you actually just go back and look at just 15 years ago darren pearl and platinum dppt it was really only just dragon is the only thing i lost to so, yeah, it lost to another Diaga itself, um, Rayquaza, Arceus Dragon, the list goes on. So, it's honestly a very, very strong typing. Now, the difference between the two, though, is obviously one is defensive with the Diaga and one is very offensive. Having the 150 special attack stat, right, without the resistances, but you move faster. Now, this 10 point increase is actually huge. Many don't think it's that big, it's huge. There are so many mods you can now outspeed, and you can build this mod a lot differently than you can with Diaga, to where in Diaga, if you wanted to run an offensive one, you'd have to put in a lot more speed investment versus Palkia. You could get away with not putting in nowhere near as much because it could outspeed certain mons that are just bulky offensive mons and this mod already has a lot of bulk as well too you don't need to run absolute max speed sometimes you could just creep it to where it outspeeds your general mons that are like also base 100 that don't run a lot of speed or it's lower than base 100 and you can just kind of get away with it so very strong mon offensively to say the least very strong mon Definitely IMO is stronger than Diago when it comes offensively. So they kind of do different jobs versus Diago, who's better defensively. Then you look at its moves here, also learns a decent amount of move pool. Hydro Pump, Aqua Tail, Power Gem, Aura Sphere, Dragon Claw, Spatial Rend, which is actually better IMO than Roar of Time because Roar of Time, it doesn't really get a lot of competitive use because it's a recharge move versus Spatial Rend is not a recharge move. So since you use Roar of Time, for whatever reason, if you didn't know, this move recharges. So that's what sucks about it. Versus Spatial Rend, it does not recharge and it has an increased crit hit ratio, uh, an eighth instead of a 24th, which is actually pretty fucking nuts. That is a whole two thirds higher for it getting its crit than originally, which is just absolutely insane. So it's, I mean, obviously, of course, Devastating Drake with uh, Roar of Time is stronger because the base power is stronger, right? Roar of Time is a literal stronger move, but consistency is better than overall nuking levels of power. And by that, I mean, it is better to consistently use a strong base 100 power stab move. That is also really good for your stat pool. And if it's typing effective, it's super effective items, yada, yada, yada. It's way better than a move that you can hit once. That could also do a lot of damage, definitely more, right? With typing effectiveness, item, and super effectiveness, right? But you're recharging, so you're kind of fucked. Now you could power her a bit, but then you're using your item slot specifically for Roar of Time when you could just use Draco or fucking Dragon Pulse. It's just not worth it. So. The better signature move here, definitely Spatial Ren that has the increased critical hit ratio of about a two-third increase, and as well too, that you lose 50 base power consistently doing damage. Also, it has better accuracy, so imagine having to recharge and then having a 10% chance to miss. That is dog, straight dog actual dog so in the long run people usually run palkia on spatial rend or go meteor no one really runs roar of time unless you're playing the game and you're like eight no one's really running that so palkia's signature move definitely better imo it gets cool moves as well too like focus punch d claw water pulse roar 
bulk up as well too. Ice Beam Blizzard, you get it. Thunder, Thunderbolt, very, very wide move pool. Earthquake, it gets Flamethrower. It's ironic, it quad resisted, but also gets it, right? So Mons like Scizor, definitely do not stand a chance against his beast. Um, it, it, the list goes on. Focus Blast, uh, Dragon Pulse, uh, even Shadow Claw. Honestly, I've seen Ren before. So the list just goes on. Like, it even gets T Wave as well, too. Rock Slide, all the stuff. It gets so many moves, and the list is very versatile, honestly speaking. And the fact that this Mon signature move is consistent as well, too, is a big, big, big plus. And there's no alternate forms for these guys. So it's just raw base stat increases for these guys. Now, you probably want to now know after hearing all of this, which is better, I know it's a little difficult to say, and the gap is not that big, because people think one is infinitely better than the other. When that is not the case, they are both very strong mons, and the gap between the two really is not that big. Like, let's say, a, for example, Dialga has 50% um, usage almost all the time, uh, Palkia would be like 51, and vice versa. So, it's really not as big of a gap as people think. Um, obviously as well too, Puggy gets increases as well too from the rain. So the big thing is that Puggy actually gets an increase in weather from the rain. So his increase of Surf, Hydro Pump, Scald even. There's no Scald yet, but in BDSP there is Scald. So it's a big buff for Palkia. That is a major increase of Palkia versus Diaga. He mainly gets a defensive boost where he does not take any damage from Sandstorm at all. And the enemy does. So you can run some like extremely obnoxious, uh, just... You could run through just some extremely obnoxious set, see where you go with that. Um, but regardless, the only real benefit that Doug gets out of weather is that he does not take damage from Sandstorm, which now if they would have said Seal types also get bulky in Sandstorm, that would have been absolutely ridiculous. But he is very good in uh, Sand teams versus Palkia being very powerful in Rain teams. So honestly speaking, because of the Rain, I'm going to give this one to Palkia guys, IMO. I do think Palkia is stronger than Diaga. I'm not going to sit here and say by much, but I think the Mon getting an increase from the Rain with a 150 special attack stat, getting a big buff of getting Scald 1, Surf and Hydro Pump 2 and 3, massive, massive power this guy can dish out with a Life Orb set, a Choice Spec set, I've even seen Mystic Water, a lot of things people can do versus Diaga. He can also do a lot of damage. I've seen Choice Spec sets, Life Orb 3 attack, T-Wave sets. I've seen it all, but, or 3 attack Rock sets. I've seen it all, but, I do think I'm going to give this one to Palkia because of the big increase it gets from the weather. Now, in BDSP, there is no permanent weather. I know they said Faithful Remakes, there is no permanent weather in these games. They're five to eight turns, depending on if you have Damp Rock or not, or Smooth Rock. But I think people should really underestimate the power of weather. I think this Mon being in the rain is absolutely a threat, and you could very well lose the game. Not to mention it learns Thunder. So Thunder is a 100% accurate move in the rain as well, too. And Spatial Rend literally is an infinitely better move than Roar Time because you have no recharge, and it gives you an increased crit as well, too, of an 8th instead of a 24th. This Mon is nuts. This Mon is nuts. Like, this thing is nuts. So, no, I do actually think Palkia is better than Diaga and stronger than Diaga. Obviously, they do different jobs. Definitely, Diaga is better defensively. But I think in the long run, who is a scarier threat when you see across the field? Definitely Palkia. If I were to see a Diaga across the field, I'd be way more scared than Palkia. Right? Even without the rain. But the fact that it could do all of this in the rain versus Diaga really can't do more in any other benefit at all is pretty ridiculous. And I, we just need to end the notion that everyone and their mother is always in saying Diaga is better when I think everyone who actually plays the game knows that Palkia is better of the two. So, Shining Pearl Boys, we're just winning. I don't even know what to say. Guys, let me know what you think. Are you mad at me because I said Diaga is not as uh, good as Palkia? Well, it's weird because they're both very strong mons. Like, the gap is not that big, but this one can get a massive power increase from the rain. So, and I mean, most times if you see the things actually ran as well too with Kyogre or like Politoed or like big rain drizzle user mon. So, and Kyogre exists in this game. So guys, let me know what you think. I'll be doing the start of videos probably tomorrow. Uh, leave a like, subscribe guys. Cop the merch. It's on screen right now. Links in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. And with that, see you guys in the next one.